Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us on a very much exciting webinar. Um, we're very proud to be able to present um, the new evolution of the Matrice series to you all. But what we will do is we're going to wait a few more minutes um, before we kick off today. Um, so just bear with us um, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you very much. Alrighty, so what we'll do is we'll get on with the day today. So like I said earlier, thank you everyone for joining us today. It's um, quite exciting to be able to present this amazing new product, the DJI Matrice 300 to you all. Um, we hope you're, on behalf of all the Sphere Drone team, we hope you're all safe um, and well out there over here in um, sunny Sydney. It's, it's a beautiful day. Um, and yeah, we're really looking forward to be able to present this to you. I'd like to thank personally my team for putting to this putting this session together um, they've done an amazing job and really am proud to have them by my side so without further ado I'm going to introduce the team that's going to be on the call today so first up as you may know my name is Paris Kokios I'm the CEO and founder of Sphere Drones um, to the right we've got Elliot Cummins g'day Elliot hey Paris yeah. nice to meet you everyone uh, and um, to the right of L, we've got um, Alex Candelius, um, Business Development Manager of Sphere Drones. G'day, Al. Hey, Paris. Thanks for joining, everyone. Looking forward to the session. Um, as I said, with the other team that I've got behind me, the business wouldn't be where it is today. And, you know, we're, we're very proud to be able to put this presentation together about the new DJI Matrix 300 series. I guess, um, as we usually do, we're just going to light up a couple um, polls um, to get going. The first poll is, do you hold a current remote pilot license? I guess as some of you may be aware, may be well aware, um, you know, we use this information to kind of gauge the conversations that we're having with the audience today. And there's going to be a number of polls throughout the webinar today. So if we can all submit that poll there, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. We'll just wait for a couple more to submit their poll questions here. It's fantastic to see today's attendance. It's really, really, really great to see. One more second on that one. Fantastic. So thank you everyone for submitting that poll question. I guess to talk through a bit more of the agenda today, we're going to go through DJI Enterprise um, and what it is. Um, DJI Matrice 300 is compatible payloads, in particular H20 series. Um, additional accessories and compatible payloads that are out there. Applications, some aircraft comparisons, arrival dates, um, the PSDK alternatives and third party additions, question and answers, and then we're going to align ourselves with an exclusive offer there at the end. Um, what you'll notice on the right hand side of your um, control panel, you'll find a question section. Um, and that question section, um, please uh, feel free to submit all your questions um, there within. Um, just give me one second whilst I'll turn off my notifications. Um, great. So we'll move on to um, just a bit more about Speed Drones and who we are as an organisation. We're here to be um, we're here to be your drone partner. And and for us, what does that mean? It means to assist our enterprise customers in the ever evolving industry of what what drones are today. Um, we've got an extensive team from industrial designers to solution engineers right the way through to um, pilots and obviously chief remote pilots, maintenance controllers and technicians. For us as an organisation, our capabilities 
stem from sales, repairs and maintenance, training, consulting, rentals, on-site support and enterprise agreement. Enterprise agreements are a new thing for us. Um, we've recently developed a platform called Puro, which we're launching hopefully towards the back end of this month. Um, and we look forward to engaging you all on that platform. Now, talking a little bit more about where we serve and our current service footprint, our headquarters located in Sydney, we've got an office on Perth, gives us this whole idea of East Coast, West Coast, enabling us to service um, the broader country of Australia. And we're really excited that we do have um, some global alliances overseas and internationally, um, one of which is RMUS, which is located in the United States, who as well is doing a webinar today um, when they wake up. I'll now hand over to Elliot um, to talk a little bit more about the DJI Enterprise products and how far we've come today. And he'll digress in a little bit more detail about what the Mitri 300 series and the H20 series payloads talk about. So over to you, El. Thanks, Paris. Hi, everyone. So uh, obviously I was pretty excited when the, uh, when the release came out last night and I've uh, been uh, cramming and cramming and trying to absorb as much of it as I can. Uh, obviously there's um, you know, still a lot of information to, to sift through, but we just wanted to you know, touch base with everyone and, and introduce you all to, to the, uh, the discoveries and um, information that we've been through. Um, so I guess, yeah, like the first slide says, uh, you know, I just wanted to touch on the, the evolution of the DJI Enterprise product. So obviously it started back with, you know, the, the flame wheels and all that kind of stuff, the, the, the very open source drones. Um, there was obviously a transition across from that consumer space to the enterprise space. And uh, so the, the, the M100 there, you know, very low payload capacity, um, but an excellent developer platform. So you can see we've also got the Z, the XT thermal cameras, the Z30 cameras, and right the way through to you know the P4 multispectral that we saw released recently. Uh, there's been a number of generations of um, of equipment, and you can see that DJI is just really refining their product offering. Uh, so it's yeah great to see the the enterprise products coming along, and they've they've certainly incorporated a. a wide range of different technologies and improvements to their products over the years. So uh, we can head over to the next slide now, Paris. As it presents there, we're just running another um, another poll there just to understand whether the audience currently uses Matrice aircraft. So the question is, does your organisation use Matrice series aircraft already? Yes, no, no, we have been waiting for the Matrice 300 series. So um, if we can just get that question answered, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. And, and as as we um, get through today, um, we, we want to ensure that we answer all your questions. So we encourage all your questions to come through there on the panel on the right hand side. Um, thank you everyone for submitting that poll. Back to you, Will. Thanks, Paris. So I guess over the years, you know, DJI has really pushed the boundaries in, in making sure that they're uh, really pushing that product safety and security aspect of their their product obviously that's a very important one to uh, to enterprise as well as consumers but you know they have incorporated functions like geofencing return to home functionalities uh, you've got height limitations they've also recently come out with uh, the AirSense ADS-B functionality to allow you to see other aircraft in the air which is phenomenal uh, just really improves your situational awareness and then obviously obstacle sensing is something that they've incorporated over a few generations of aircraft and they're really just doing it an amazing job with uh, improving that technology. I uh, I was quite impressed to see the uh, the latest version of consumer drone, the uh, Mavic Air 2, uh, incorporating the APAS uh, flight autonomous uh, obstacle avoidance system. And I, I was lucky enough to see the uh, the a video of one of the DJI team members running through a forest while the drone was uh, dodging and weaving trees. So. I was hoping to see something similar to that in the Matrice 300, and so to see the the degree of quality that they've um, incorporated that uh, that facet into the drone is just great to see. So uh, there's a whole bunch of autonomous functions uh, within the Matrice 300, which uh, won't be uh, fully uh, done justice unless you actually see them in action or in in a video. So um, we'll, we'll get some information to you guys about that later, but. 
the um, the product security. So obviously, uh, you know, having password functionalities on the apps, uh, the the data stream encryption, and now they've also incorporated a local data mode for people who are particularly concerned with privacy. You've got a, a great product support network here with DJI as well, and you know, with us being uh, such a, a big advocate for the DJI product, where we fully support the DJI um, infrastructure. Um, so you've got the ability to get you know decent repairs, parts. Um, they've they've recently come out with Care Refresh and Enterprise Shield, which are another great uh, add-on for for a lot of users. It just means that the the process is a little bit more streamlined, and that uh, t ties in really nicely with our Curo uh, platform, which we can talk about a little bit later. But I guess one of the big selling points for me with a DJI system as well is just that they're so user friendly and intuitive. You know, being able to uh, transfer across from platform to platform and you know pick it up and and almost fly straight away in some instances, uh, just really uh, phenomenal product. So I'm a big fan. Uh, next slide, thank you, Paris. So you can see here this is a, an image of the uh, the Matrice 300 with the, the two new payloads. So uh, obviously, it's had a little bit of a design shift there. Um, on the uh, the middle camera there, that's the H20 series camera, and then the uh, the H20T is on the right hand side there. So we can head over to the next slide. Thanks, Paris. So I guess as a quick glance on the new system, we've got the uh, the RTK is actually incorporated to this one as standard. So if you already have a DRTK2 from a Phantom 4 RTK or an Agras uh, or a, a Matrice 210 RTK V2, then that can be uh, forward compatible with the, RT, uh, with the uh, M300 RTK. There are a couple of firmware updates that just need to be done, but uh, needs fun need functionality to be able to bring that forward, which is great. Uh, so there's two new payloads, which we've discussed briefly a moment ago. The, uh, there's a, a really gnarly uh, FPV camera built into the front of this platform which is great uh, it doesn't have a gimbal but it's it's got a really nice wide field of view and it, it broadcasts a nice high quality image back to to the camera sorry to to the controller the uh the new controller is a uh, a smart controller enterprise so that's a, a really high brightness screen it's all integrated and it, it looks like a really nice piece of kit i'm really keen to get hands on with it the aircraft obviously has that you know dreamy 50 to 55 minute flight time. Uh, we've got, um, I guess in terms of, that, that's obviously a, a no payload uh, flight time, but the uh, un with full payload, you're getting about 31 minutes uh, with um, the, the new M300. You can see there you've got a 2.7 kilo max payload and the, uh, which is an improvement on the, uh, the Matrice 200 series as well. And then uh, the the new new aircraft is compatible with the XT2 and the Z30, so it's nice that those two ca those two payloads specifically will be able to be carried forward. I know there'll be a lot of people who have those payloads already and you know uh, want to get started with the new platform. With the uh, the two new payloads, the H20 and the H20T, those are obviously compatible with the new aircraft as well, but uh, we haven't seen uh, what the new high resolution imager will be for the. Matrice 300 series, so keen to see what that one comes out at. The uh, X4S, X5S, and X7, as I may have just mentioned, are not compatible with the M300 at the moment, but we'll see how we go. Uh, on the battery front, obviously, there's a new battery for the, the new aircraft. So the uh, the TB60 batteries, I'll, uh, I'll discuss them a little bit later, but they are, uh, are very powerful batteries. They're 12S batteries, and, and we'll touch on that a bit later, but um, that's a, a neat new product there. Uh, obviously, being over 160 watt hours, they're not going to be safe for air transport, but uh, I think that that's just going to mean that people start doing things a little bit differently. And we'll, again, we'll touch on that in a moment. So uh, obviously, big design feature change is the motors and propellers being mounted underneath the arm. So that's the first, uh, this is the first aircraft created by DJI that has downwards facing uh, motors and props. So the benefit of having that, uh, that configuration is that it, it, it allows a full 360 degree uh, obstacle detection system to be mounted on the top. As you can see there, I've got uh, a note that it's, uh, they're using foldable propellers, foldable propellers just like the, uh, the Mavic Pro and um, Matrice 600 systems that we're familiar with. So that's a nice new change and they've got some low noise props on there as well as a uh, high altitude prop option available for that too. 
so it looks like I've doubled up on the uh, the watt hour comment there. So 274 watt hours is the uh, the total count of each battery. So they are massive batteries. Uh, as I've mentioned already, the omnidirectional sensors are built in on the top. Uh, this is just it's I don't want to say bulletproof because uh, um, I don't want to be held to that uh, you know um, demand, but it it does seem to me like uh, that's what this system will be with that uh, those sensors. So just a, a quick um, uh, turn back to the uh, the batteries. We are uh, potentially going to be having some uh, some rental batteries available as well. So if you guys do find that you're in different locations or you just need some batteries for for a particular job, just uh, reach out to us and we can potentially help you out there. Uh, we'll we'll likely have batteries in every state. So. Uh, in terms of features for the uh, the aircraft, there's some new features which will really improve the workflow, usability, and um, reliability of these these this system to be deployed in the field. Uh, you'll be able to just replicate jobs continuously, so you'll essentially be able to go out and do the same job. You know, if you're doing it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you can go out and you don't have to. Uh, create that new mission every time you can say oh i want to do exactly the same mission so for all you all, all you guys that are doing an inspection work with this system that'll be a, a huge advantage to you guys uh, the uh the case uh so in terms of the, the the footprint of the system one thing that i was expecting with the m300 was i was expecting it to be this monstrous thing uh that takes up a huge amount of space and while it it is certainly bigger and heavier than the Matrice 200 series. It, it folds down so compact, and I was actually really pleasantly surprised to see how DJI have managed to squeeze it into such a small case. So uh, really keen to get hands on with that. And I think that we'll we'll also see very sh very shortly. I think that we'll see uh, you know cases being produced by um, GPC, for example, for the um, the the two sorry for the 300 series uh, that will make it really quick and easy to deploy and just allow you to have all your gear in the same place. Um, so that's enough rambling on that side. Thank you, Paris. If you could head, to, head down to the next one. So as I've touched on some of these things before, um, you know, it's got a, a really compact design when you're, when you're folding it away. So the arms actually fold out in a similar fashion to um, the, uh, the, the Mavic uh, platform that we've seen. So it's a slightly different mechanism, but the similar principle. Uh, doesn't quite fold down to the water bottle size of the Mavic, but um, it does fold down pretty compact. Uh, it's uh, got that FPV camera there that I mentioned before, and that's actually a, a pretty uh, high quality camera. Um, it, uh, it helps a lot with the situational awareness. Um, so anyone who's been using the uh, Inspire 2 or Matrice 200 series that has that little built-in FPV camera, you, can, you guys will be able to appreciate that one. We've got a new transmission system for this one, the OcuSync Enterprise. So that gives an amazing range. So in the US, I believe it might have even been something like 15 kilometers or something like that. Uh, I tend not to think too much about the, what the American um, versions are, but for, for us here in Australia, we'll be seeing potentially up to eight kilometers. So obviously, um, you know, that's uh, on paper, you might see a, a slight reduction in range in, in the real world, but to to have such a phenomenal um, transmission quality um, will be will be great. Uh, the uh, aircraft obviously has obstacle protection built into it, um, and that's 360 degrees, um, as well as it also does have up and downwards sensors as well. So the weight of the aircraft. So you can see there that the uh, the weight of the aircraft with two flight batteries is uh, 6.3 kilos. Now for all those who are using an REP, who, who are RPL, REPL holders, uh, who have a sub seven kilo license, uh, that will allow you to use either the XT2, the Z30, or the H20 with this system. If you want to use the H20T, it does unfortunately just come in at 7.2 kilos or something like that. So just make sure if you guys are going to be operating the uh, the H20T with this system, make sure that you do consider your licensing requirements and, and make sure that you get that actual weight of the aircraft before you fly. So uh, the obviously the, the aircraft there being max takeoff weight at nine kilos, if you are operating it with full payload and everything, then you will see that you will need that, uh, that sub 25 kilo endorsement. So give us a bell and we can help you out with that if need be. Uh, next slide. Thank you, Paris. 
Weather, so this is a big one here. Uh, the fact that we did see a few incidents where people had uh, either got caught in a shower or they flew in conditions where they might not have been, um, that might not have been ideal. Uh, this system comes with an improved in, in uh, ingress protection rating at IP45. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the IP rating system, what that means is that it's um, resistant to ingress from solids that are uh, larger than one millimeter. Um, and then, sorry, I've been having a little bit of trouble with those um, with those symbols lately. I've been putting them in the wrong orders. Um, so yeah, solids over one millimeter. Um, it's also uh, resistant to low pressure water jets from any direction. Um, just a note there that the uh, the ingress protection rating is uh, on the system when it is brand new. So as the system um, does start to age, and if you're you know punishing the aircraft a little bit, it is really important to make sure that you do maintain the system properly, um, just to maintain that ingress protection rating. Um, they've put the ESCs in the body now, so that improves the uh, the sealing capability. It just means that uh, you know slightly less chance of of water um, affecting those ESCs or, or those um, ESCs overheating, etc. Um, so the, the spec that we've seen there as well is, or sorry, in terms of the, the metric rather, um, DJI stated, do not fly in rain heavier than 100 millimetres in 24 hours, which to me seems like quite a lot of, um, you, you'd certainly notice that it's raining at that point and, you know, you would be reconsidering your operation potentially. Uh, but the fact that this system does have that IP45 rating means that, you know, you can potentially in emergency situations fly this system in that rain. Um, Improved operating temperature range. So uh, I know there'll be a lot of you who are operating this system in pretty extreme environments. We're pretty lucky here in Australia that it doesn't get down to minus 20, uh, but it does get pretty uh, does get pretty hot. So for all, all of you operating out in the desert um, or, or way up north, this will make a big difference for you guys. So 50, 50 degrees Celsius, that's um, a huge improvement. Um, being sub uh, being able to operate at uh, minus 20, uh, obviously it has uh, battery heaters built into it. So, and I, I believe that that's all automated now, which is pretty nice. So if it if the battery temperature drops, I think that it just um, automatically uh, activates that warming function. Another big one here for uh, those of you operating in, in windy environments. So 15 meters a second, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's the uh, the highest wind rating in any of the uh, the DJI aircraft. So 15 meters a second or 54 kilometers an hour is is pretty solid. Uh, just a note as well on the camera series. So the H20 series does have a slightly lower ingress protection rating than the the aircraft itself. Uh, so IP44. Uh, the, the difference being that it's it's still got that same resist um, that same uh, rating against solids, but with uh, with liquids, you just got to be mindful that it's only splashing water rather than a low pressure water jet. Uh, so that's it for this slide. Uh, by the way, guys, if you um, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them through. There's a uh, the uh, go to webinar control panel has a uh, has a, a questions function. So. Um, if you can shoot through any questions there, we'll, we'll um, see how many we can get through at the end. And um, if there are any that pop up that are particularly relevant um, that we need to address in, in a slide, then we will. Uh, if you do have any issues with uh, lodging your questions through GoToWebinar as well, please feel free to shoot us through an email. So we'll, we'll make sure that you've got our um, contact details at the end. So in terms of payloads that are available, uh, off the get-go, we've got the XTS, which uh, is a, a new thermal camera that is uh, been released by DJI. Here in Australia, I do have to just confirm uh, whether the XTS will be available. Um, we will get back to you guys on that one, but I did just want to include that here because if you guys are, do end up operating overseas as well, I'm not sure. Paris, do we have any anyone tuning in from overseas? Do we know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we actually we actually do. So um, I think it is uh, beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. Um, you know, well, welcome to the to our overseas contingent. Uh, so anyway, XTS is uh, is a thermal camera that's just been released by DJI. Um, that's compatible with this system. Obviously, I mentioned before the XT2 and the Z30 are compatible, and then the H20 um, series there as well. So within the HT series H20 series, there is the H20 and the H20T. Uh, obviously, the difference being thermal. Uh, next slide, thank you, Paris. So this is a really neat feature that uh, 
I was quite impressed by. So with the Matrice 200 series, uh, the 210 and the 210 RTK V1 and V2, uh, I was really impressed with the fact that we could e that we could have a, um, a single upwards and single downwards facing gimbal. And I think DJI has really taken that on board and, uh, and really spec'd it out. So you can see here, this slide shows that you've got the option. There's three, you can have three gimbals on there at once. Oh, sorry, three three payloads on there at once. So you've got uh, on the left hand side there, you've got the XT uh, S on top. You've got the H twenty T on the bottom, uh, and then uh, on the top right hand corner of this one, we've got the uh, we've got a spotlight payload, which is a, a third party payload, as well as the uh, the zoom camera and the uh, the XT camera there. And then we've also got the one on the bottom, um, which is just the single standard gimbal. So depending on your use cases, you've got potential for you know upwards inspections uh like bridge underneath bridge inspections all that kind of stuff uh and then you know if you I, I guess one of the big uh one of the the main focuses of this system is that search and rescue and emergency application where you know you might need to have a thermal and a spotlight etc um but uh yeah really really versatile platform i'm really keen to see uh the improvements for it as it comes along so next slide beautiful so one thing i just wanted to touch on quickly one of the really nice functions of this M300 aircraft is the fact that you do have the ability to hot swap the batteries now. So there was a workaround that you could do with the uh, M200 series, but it was a little bit of a kind of a jimmy. It wasn't really uh, the best way to do it. Uh, but obviously seeing the Inspire 2 with that uh, hot swap functionality for the batteries was uh, was a really neat function. So uh, you, what you can see, if you look closely here, you can see that the, the two batteries are held in by a horizontal um, uh, lever, I suppose. So that lever actually rotates uh, 90 degrees. So what you can do is you, you rotate that 90 degrees and you can pull your bat, you can pull either of your batteries in or out. So it is nice. It looks like it's a little bit more streamlined. There's no springs, etc., uh, like there are with the M200 series. So I, I know that there were a few people who had um, broken springs and things like that. So I think they've really simplified this, made it a little bit more um, user-friendly and intuitive, but also it seems to me like that's a much um, more reliable and safe system. So um, kudos to DJI on that front. Um, and while we've got this photo here as well, you can see uh, that we do have the two uh, the two different types of antennas on the top of the uh, the motor arms there. So uh, this is a rear view of the aircraft, obviously, and on the back there we have uh, the two uh, so the, the RTK antennas on, on the rear um, closest to us and then uh, the, the narrower antenna on the other side are uh, what I believe to be the, the communication antennas between uh, for, for the, the OcuSync Enterprise. Uh, you can also see while I've got this aircraft view here, you can see those really nice uh, uh, sensors on the back there. So there's some visual sensors and uh, infrared sensors there. Uh, you can also see on the top there, there's a strobe uh functionality built in there as well so that that beacon uh allows for better visibility which will um, make a lot of manned aircraft uh operators very happy uh, but also just helps a little bit with that visibility um, so in terms of the way that the arms fold out as well you can see that 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 arming the the arm securing mechanism is uh something that's kind of familiar to uh anyone who's used a matrice 200 series before or any of the the agras or wind series aircraft um, but the, the the way that the arms fold is slightly different. Um, so I don't have a, a, a GIF for you, I'm afraid. I wasn't really confident in the ability of it uh, to, to be displayed properly with the streaming of, of the webinar, but um, I'll see what we can find for you guys in terms of that mechanism. But if you guys are interested in a demonstration, uh, that's something that would be uh, really, really well displayed in person as well. So feel free to reach out if you'd, um, if you'd like to have a demonstration. So the payload, so I've mentioned a little bit about these two already. Uh, so on the left there, you can see the, the uh, H20, and then on the right-hand side there, we've got the H20T. So um, starting out with the zoom camera, the megapixel camera in this one, 20 megapixels. So for any of you who are familiar with the Z30, that was a very low megapixel sensor. Uh, and it was a, um, a relatively small sensor as well. So DJI has really improved the, the quality of the camera in this, uh, in this payload. So 20 megapixels there, it's a 1, 1 1.7th of an inch sensor. Uh, it's got an equivalent, equivalent full frame focal length of 32 millimeters to 556 millimeters. So that's uh, 
23 times hybrid optical zoom. So not quite as much zoom as the Z30, uh, but I would expect to see a significant impre uh, increase in, uh, in quality. Um, the uh, the maximum zoom with this one is 200, and technically on the, the Z30, it does say something like, a, I think it's 180 times total zoom, so you've got 30 times optical and six times digital on the Z30. So I'd expect to see the image quality in this camera to be much, much better than the predecessor. That IR cut feature, just wanted to, um, to touch on that one really quickly. So that's a really neat function that I was uh, discussing with one of our customers, uh, the fact that uh, they were using the Z30 in a smoky environment uh, during the recent bushfires, and they found that using the IR cut function allowed them to see much further. Uh, and it's not something that's really well documented within the DJI architecture and, and documentation. So to see that IR cut feature transported uh, to be also featured in the Z20 is pretty nice. So this has a, a, a F2.8 aperture, um, sorry, a variable aperture of F2.8 to F11. I have to double check, actually, I can't re recall if that's a variable aperture in uh, the standard photography sense or if it's a, an aperture that changes as the camera zooms in. Um, but you can see there that F2.8, it's uh, letting a lot of light through while it's uh, wide open. So both of these cameras have that laser rangefinder built into them as well. So that's that's functional from three meters to, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, three, I've, I've uh, put a bit of a typo here, I'm afraid. It's actually three meters to 1200 meters detection range. So uh, obviously the accuracy of that laser rangefinder does vary over uh, the distance. So if you're looking at something that's really far away, there will be a, a, an accuracy um, element of that. The specs are available online, so check it out. But it's a, a really impressive to be able to, you know, effectively say I am you know x number of meters away from something with such a high degree of certainty um, and that's something that channels through into some of the smart features that um, that that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, so as I mentioned both of these cameras have the laser rangefinder built into them uh, they do also have a wide camera there so what you can see on the Z20 on the left the wide camera is just on the bottom left of that gimbal and then on the uh, the Z20T sorry H20T on the right um, you can see that the uh, the RGB um, wide camera is just between, uh, uh, just above the um, the zoom camera and to the left of that uh, white patch, which is the uh, the laser rangefinder there. Uh, so the wide camera is a 12 megapixel uh, sensor. It's a one one over 2.3 of an inch, uh, and it's the full. It's got a full frame equivalent length, a focal length of uh, 24 millimeters. So that's a, 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 I believe off the top of my head, that's the same focal length as the Phantom 4 um, field of view. So that'll be familiar to a lot of you. And then f 2.8 on that one as well. And then the thermal. So this one's this one's an amazing integration that they've done. So they've they've gone with a 13 and a half mil focal length on that one. Uh, I believe that that seems like a pretty common focal length for people to be asking for. So it's nice that they've um, made it a little bit more useful than perhaps a really long or um, a focal length that's too wide. This sensor has the uh, the large sensor size in it. So it's a 640 by 512. Uh, I haven't actually mentioned there that it's a 30 hertz um, version. I do believe there might potentially be a, uh, a smaller Sense, or oh, sorry, I, I heard a rumor that there might be a, a smaller sensor size available, but uh, I haven't got any official information on that one yet. So, um, yeah, if anyone is particularly interested in that smaller sensor size, let us know. But I think a lot of people will be angling for that larger sensor size. And it is a radiometric camera, and it does have the two, four, and eight times digital zoom that you'd be familiar with for the uh, the XT2. Beautiful, so we've got another poll here. I'll just hand over to Paris for a moment. Thanks, Ellie, you're doing an amazing job and I hope everyone's enjoying that. Just before we jump onto this poll, another reminder that um, we are we are answering questions. Um, so feel free to funnel them through um, between Alex, Elliot and myself. We're getting through these questions. So um, we will answer them towards the back end of um, the session. So if you can just answer this poll now, that would be, um, that would be fantastic. So ignore um, the, the last, Poll question there, obviously, no being, no, we have been waiting for the matrix and hundreds, there's a copy and paste over there. So, um, specifically about the preventative maintenance, 
um, of your fleet. And I guess the reason towards it is there's a big emphasis from DJI on the, the, the maintenance of um, aircraft to the point where they've got a, a maintenance manual that they've established um, within their, um, their their product release. So, um, yeah, if you could just answer that question, we'll just wait a couple more seconds for a couple more people to answer that poll question in front of you. Um, and we'll get on with um, Elliot again. Any questions, please feel free to submit them in the control panel. We'll get to them um, towards the back end of this session. Thank you, everyone. Elliot, I'll pass it back to you to talk a little bit more about that UAV health management system and um, all that kind of stuff. So, please. Beautiful. Thanks for that, Paris. Um, just wanted to apologise as well, guys, for I understand there's a couple of people who haven't been able to answer uh, the polls, so um, sorry that that's, uh, that functionality is not quite working out. We'll have to do a little bit of troubleshooting on that one later. And on that, um, on that, Elliot, just just for anyone that does um, answer the polls, you can answer them within the question section there, and um, we can action those polls as they come. So, yeah. uh, beautiful. Thanks, Paris. So. One of the new functions of the M300 series uh, infrastructure is this new UAV health management system that um, DJI has incorporated. So uh, it's still early days, and you know I'm, I'm keen to do a bit more of a deep dive on that one uh, as as more information comes out and um, as we're able to get hands on with the product. But uh, from a glance, it does look like they're providing a lot more uh, detailed information and a little bit more um, insight and oversight of your system so being able to check on your your aircraft's health um, you know checking the data management flight log management firmware management um, checking area records and troubleshooting guide log guidelines um, so maintenance is something that we've really specialized in over the years here at sphere so we've actually got in integrated flight logs within our curo platform um, and just really allows the like drone program managers or, or drone pilot um, single pilot operators whatever it is to to really have a much better grasp on on the health and um, and oversight on their systems um, so that's it for that slide thank you paris Enterprise Shield. So this is something that I'm a big fan of. Uh, the um, Enterprise Shield, basically, if, if you're not familiar with it already, it essentially gives you um, damage protection. That's the best way to think of it. So uh, the Enterprise Shield gives you a couple of replacements. It's a uh, basically the, the uh, commercial variation on uh, Carefresh, which is similar principle. Basically, damage protection you pay, um, I think on the consumer stuff, it was about 10% of the purchase price as a rough ballpark. Um, and then if you had a, um, if you had an incident, then you'd um, pay another 10% um, to, to make that claim. Uh, and then um, you've got two lives or a year's cover, whatever comes first. Uh, the way I explain it to people is uh, you drop it, you break it, you spill your drink on it, you're covered. Um, if it goes for a swim, then you need to go for a swim. So uh, if you uh, end up losing the drone in a lake or a, a reservoir, it does, uh, it can be really beneficial to, uh, to retrieve the aircraft, obviously making sure that it is safe to do so, of course. I don't want anyone jumping into any, uh, any uh, acidic lakes or anything like that, but um, it is uh, good to know that you do have that peace of mind. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it on the Enterprise Shield. Beautiful. So uh, one of the big things that I like about the new M300 series is it's just a far safer, far more effective and reliable craft. So uh, one of the big things that makes me really, really happy to see that they've incorporated into the M300 is this um, auto rotation functionality, which I'll talk about on the next slide. I probably should have put that on uh, on this slide because of the fact that it's such a big one for me. but. Um, Essentially, with this system, uh, if you lose a uh, a, uh, a motor, um, you lose if you lose a propeller, you have a, a you know a failure of a motor or propeller, the system will essentially auto rotate. And I'm not sure if anyone's seen the video, but there's a video floating around of the uh, the Inspire 2 uh, being flown over. I think it might have been a car park in the US or something like that. But essentially, drone. 
um, loses a prop and essentially has a, a control, a somewhat controlled descent uh, to the ground. Has a heavy landing, but uh, you know no one's injured, um, the drone's not destroyed, and um, you know just a minor repair to get that fixed. But that's a huge, huge redundancy to to incorporate, and I'm really glad to see that DJI has taken you know that algorithm um, that basically creates a, a helicopter-like motion within the drone to, to have it come down and land a bit more safely. Um, so that'll certainly please um, please the regulators, please the operators. And, uh, you know, I think one thing with this is that while it, uh, operations over people in Australia are not, necess are, are not um, necessarily always easily achievable, uh, you know, the fact that you could potentially demonstrate that the system can, uh, you know, recover from a situation like that will be uh, really beneficial. And uh, particularly when you look at this system as a potential candidate for uh, BV loss, you know, our, at first glance, our consulting teams earmark the M300 as, as a capable BV loss aircraft. So there's a few other things that factor into that um, that categorization, which I'll, I'll touch on a little bit later. But um, you know, if you see on this slide here, we've got multi-sensor redundancy. There's dual IMUs, dual barometers, dual compass. You know, it's got a dual RTK antenna and GSS, GNSS module. That's your GPS. Um, so having that redundancy means that, you know, if you do have any failures, you do have any dropouts, you do have any issues while you're on site, um, it does give you that potential to be able to continue on or you know, at least land safely, et cetera. So that's a big one. Um, advanced dual control. So this one is a, a really big one for the BV loss, EV loss uh, operators. So being able to hand over control is one of the big functionalities here. So uh, a perfect scenario for this would be if you were doing, say, a power line inspection or something where, you know, you might have kilometres and kilometres of power lines to inspect. Uh, being able to have uh, a team set up so that you can bunny hop from location to location and hand over control from one operator to the other operator means that you can have, the, if you were at one telegraph pole, you could put your, your drone up, get your, your footage, um, all staying in visual line of sight with pilot one. Then you could fly the aircraft towards pilot two, who might be 500 meters or a kilometer down the road. They can then press a button and take over control of that aircraft, uh, you know, operating under extended visual line of sight, whatever that looks like. And then pilot two can then take over control of that aircraft and pilot one or pilot three can then pr be prepared to do the same thing, you know, another 500 meters a kilometer down the line. So this will be a really big win for anyone who's looking to do EV loss or BV loss operations. Um, yeah, phenomenal uh, improvement by DJI. So I know that that's a lot of things that people were asking about. Um, dual battery, again, this is something that's not... Uh, unfamiliar to people who already use DJI equipment, but having that dual battery functionality there is really neat. Um, I believe that they've improved it somewhat so that if you have one complete battery failure, the drone can still return home safely. So I'm really keen to learn a little bit more about that one. So we'll keep you guys updated as we, we learn more information about that. But uh, yeah, that's a neat little feature. And I guess one of the things that, uh, that people are always asking about is, you know, with my redundancies, should I go for a hexacopter instead of a, a quadcopter? Should I go for an aircraft that has six batteries or two batteries instead of one? And I think that you know having those redundancies there is a big, uh, big winner. In this instance, having dual batteries and that uh, particularly the auto rotate function um, is a uh, yeah makes this system a standout and potentially you know competing with some of the hexacopter um, options that are on the market. Beautiful. So the three, three propeller emergency landing that I mentioned before. So being able to maintain control of the aircraft, especially in the case of a motor malfunction. So um, yeah, well done, DJ. Hats off to you. Uh, extra wide FPV camera. So this one's not so much a redundancy as just a, a really nice safety feature. So being able to maintain situational awareness, if even if the camera payload is not functioning properly. So um, as you can see, with if, if you were to have you know two or three uh, camera payloads on this one um, and then you've also got the um, the FPV feed uh, in the uh, built into the aircraft as well you, I guess it just gives you extra redundancy which is great um, the ADS-B receiver so air sense is something that's been around for a little while now uh, I believe this is the, uh, the second range of aircraft that they've put it into it could be the third but 
DJI has uh, obviously made that commitment to really improve uh, situational awareness for all manned aircraft users. So being able to, to identify if you've got any aircraft in the vicinity is just a phenomenal safety feature of this aircraft. Uh, we've done a few operations um, by the coast and there's a, uh, for those of you in Sydney, we've got the, uh, oh sorry, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Sydney airspace, uh, there's a, a Victor One um, flight route that goes down the coast there. So being able to, uh, you know, identify if there's an aircraft um, nearby using the, the transponders that are in those aircraft is really handy for a drone operator to be able to to keep out of the way of people who um, they might otherwise be presenting a hazard to. So yeah, again, I'm really keen to see that DJI has uh, incorporated that one as well. Omnidirectional sensing. So again, this is something that I'm really keen to see and I've seen a few uh, little videos and, and explanations of how this uh, this feature works, but essentially um, you've got visual and TOF. I, I believe TOF is uh, like an infrared sort of style uh, sensor, but it's got it on all six sides of the aircraft. So forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. Uh, so this also has an improved range. So this one has a 40 meter maximum detection range, whereas the previous generation uh, was, I believe, 20 meters. Uh, having customizable aircraft sensing behavior, I know that there's a few people who uh, do want to be able to tinker and tailor their aircraft specifically to their operations. So uh, really keen to get hands on with this system and, and see exactly what we can do to, to make that aircraft uh, more appropriate for your operation. But I guess as an example, if you wanted to uh, have a, uh, a buffer between yourself and any obstacles, it, it seems like that will allow you to potentially change that distance that the aircraft might stop or slow down um, from uh, that obstacle. Uh, that is a feature that we have also seen, um, uh, not a, um, a programmable function, sorry, but with the um, the Agras uh, is is another f uh, aircraft that does have you know a radar um, uh, add-on to the side of it, and that allows the aircraft to start to slow down as it approaches an obstacle and then stop uh, about two and a half meters from that obstacle. So that's a nice function. Um, you can see there as well the top and bottom aircraft collision beacons is listed there. Uh, I did mention that one before. And then top and bottom auxiliary lights. So um, having a top auxiliary light is a, is a new one and that's a little bit interesting. I, I, I'm keen to see that one in, in real life. Uh, obviously the uh, the bottom auxiliary lights is some is a feature that we have seen in a couple of other uh, of the DJI aircraft to date, but great to see they've incorporated that one to a, uh, an enterprise uh, aircraft for us. Smart controller. Uh, this one I am very keen to get my hands on. Uh, sorry for the pun, guys. Uh, the smart controller enterprise looks like a basic smart controller, uh, but it does have a few extra features in it. So this one utilizes a, uh, a WB37 battery, which you can't really see pictured here, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. I've uh, used, uh, used these two pictures to show you a bit more about the front, but when I first saw the image, I actually thought that that silver bracket on the bottom was a port. Um, but what it actually is, is it's um, a, a lanyard securing point, which is quite nice. Uh, so DJI has actually incorporated onto this remote uh, three anchor points. So there's a silver one at the bottom and then there's two black ones on either side of the remote. So uh, the system actually comes with a built-in neck strap. So being able to have the system um, secured to yourself uh, effectively and comfortably while still maintaining vision on uh, all of your, uh, your Crystal Sky-esque screen there, as well as have access to all of your controls and things. Um, that's a really neat function. That's one of the shortcomings, I suppose, of the, the traditional DJI controller is that, you know, if you do have a lanyard um, set up, then uh, sometimes that can get in the way a little bit. So keen to see how that one that one fares. Um, you can see here that you've got a couple of custom buttons there. You've got the power button, return to home, um, the pause button. Uh, you've also got TS, and I believe that's an N now for normal mode. Um, and then uh, on the back, what you can't see on the back is it actually has a kickstand. You can kind of see it in the right-hand side. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say kickstand. It has a, a built-in stand. So you can actually leave this controller freestanding on a surface, which is a pretty nice little functionality. Um, obviously, um, yeah, 
Uh, and then as I mentioned on the back, it's got a WV37. So uh, I have to double check whether the batteries are hot swappable, um, but uh, obviously with the Crystal Sky, you can, you can take the battery out and then pop the battery back in. Uh, with the, from what I understand, the battery life on this system is about four, four and a half hours um, on one WB37. So it may be unlikely that you do need to change batteries uh, anyway, but if, for example, you got caught off guard and you needed to change your battery out, it's pretty easy to just chuck another WB37 in there. Um, this system also has a, a really, not, like I said, the, it has a OcuSync enterprise transmission system. So they've really improved that uh, that image quality that comes back to this. And one thing, if you are not familiar with the Crystal Sky screens, uh, the Crystal Sky screens that, unfortunately, sorry guys, they're not compatible with the M300, but uh, the the screens on the Crystal Sky are phenomenal in uh, in bright conditions. So the just for reference, the um, the average. Uh, I think the, the brightest iPad was about 400 nits. Um, that's the unit of measurement for brightness of a screen. The, the, the brightest iPhone, I believe, was about 700 nits. And the, uh, the screen that they've used for this screen here uh, is 1,000 nits. So anyone who's already used them will be able to testify to uh, the, um, the, the brightness of that screen and how handy it is. Um, I guess just you know not having to worry about messing around with screen hoods, et cetera, is, is really handy. Um, one thing that I, I should have actually included a, a top-down view of the, uh, of the camera, uh, sorry, of, of the remote controller, but um, the, the remote controller does have an HDMI output on the top. So for anyone who's wanting to do live broadcast stuff, uh, you know, put it to a TV um, or a larger monitor uh, or, or a live transmitter, um, that's a really handy functionality. And that, that's something that was present in the, the smart controller version one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see that they've realized the importance of that, that port. Um, it does also have on the top, it's got a, uh, a USB port on the top, and I believe that there's also a uh, micro SD card slot as well. So uh, yeah, well done to, to DJI on this controller. I'm, I'm really keen to get hands on with it. Beautiful. So. Uh, Battery station. Again, this is something that we were uh, screaming out for with the uh, TB55 batteries, and it's it's really great to see the DJIs listening to the feedback from uh, from their clients. So um, the battery station here, it's a. Uh, um, I've only put the specs for the Australian version, but um, 60 minutes. Uh, fully charging two TB60 batteries or 30 minutes charging two TB60 batteries from 20% to 90%. So uh, to me, one of my, uh, one of my favorite pieces of equipment as, uh, as weird as it sounds is the battery station. Um, just being able to plug all your, your batteries in and charge them all at once, uh, as opposed to having to use the, um, the, the TB50 charging hub like uh, we did with the Inspire 2 and M200 series. Um, it's just a little bit fiddly when you're trying to charge, you know, a, a large volume of batteries. So uh, really glad to see DJI has done that. So this can charge four pairs of TB60 batteries. And uh, it also charges, sorry for the, the typo there, it should be four WB37s. They are, uh, obviously aren't required in pairs. Um, so the it charges four WB37s and four TB60s. So, um, yeah, a really, really great um, charging system. So this is the actual charger for the M300 series. There is no uh, standalone, um, you know, the uh, TB60 charger. There is no uh, stand. There is no new uh, WB37 charger for uh, the M300 series. But nice to see that they've incorporated that into one piece. Um, it does also have a, a neat little feature which you can't see in this image, but there is a little uh, kickstand cover that goes over the um, the port. So if you can see, uh, you've got the two rows, the two large cavities in that case for the TB60s, and then you've got a sort of uh, standoff slightly above it. That's where your uh, WB37s plug in. And then on the uh, the right-hand side of that standoff uh, is where you plug in your, your power cable to, to power the, uh, the system. Now, uh, 
there's actually a little kickstand there that means that you can't access, that the lid is uh, less likely to close uh, while you've got the batteries um, batteries in there and the cable plugged in. So that's a neat little safety feature. Again, DJI just really showing how well they've thought through the design for all this. Um, obviously, this charger is a little bit heavier than your standard TV50 charger or WB37 charger. It, it does come in at about 8.4 kilos, but I think that, uh, you know, usability and, and um, practicality is just uh, a, a really well-made system so um, yeah keen to get hands-on with that one I believe it also does have um, you can see on the, the bottom left hand side there that we do have um, uh, a status indicator as well and a couple of buttons and things but uh, I think that's probably something that we might end up looking to do a uh, an unboxing video or something like that to really run through all that stuff with you guys down the line TB60s. So I've touched on them a little bit before. Uh, it's a really nice design function that they've got for these batteries. They're not quite so um, bulky. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say they're not bulky because they they are quite large, but um, they are a little bit more streamlined than the TB55s. Uh, the TB55s obviously were a little bit more chunky on one side, and and um, you know the form factor of these is really nice. Um, battery capacity. They're 59. 35 milliamp hours, 5.9 amp hours. So that's a huge step up in battery size. Um, they are 12S batteries, 12 cell batteries. So each of those is um, is a, a big, big hefty battery. Uh, 52.8 volts is the, uh, the number of voltage there and um, 274 watt hours. So again, as I said before, they're not airplane safe. Um, you won't be able to take these on any planes. Um, they are gonna be considered dangerous goods. So. Um, don't plan on flying with them. You can see that they are quite heavy. They're 1.35 kilos each. Um, the, the operating temperature of these is uh, 20 to 50 degrees Celsius. Sorry for leaving the C off there. Um, in terms of flight time, uh, obviously, depending on the payload, you've got 31 to 55 minutes, um, 31 being full payload, 55 being uh, no payload. Um, that is also on paper as well. So while, uh, while DJI is pretty good at showing you what kind of flight times to expect. I would expect a slightly reduced um, flight time, but even to have um, you know a 55 minute flight time on a DJI system is, um, is really impressive. So yeah, very pleased to see that. Radar unit, uh, sorry for the lack of information on this one, but uh, I, found, uh, I, I found some information about it and I couldn't find it when I was writing the, uh, the slides again, but essentially this is a radar unit that bolts onto the top of the aircraft. So if any of you have seen the Agras uh, that I mentioned before that utilizes a radar unit, this actually provides you with a really accurate way of, um, of, of uh, improving your accuracy and um, and, and measurements, etc. So I have to find some more information for you guys, and I apologize I don't have more information for you in the slideshow here, but um, this is a really neat function that they have uh, enabled for the M300. So uh, I'm really keen to, to really get my head around that and see how that's gonna incorporate into the workflow. Um, now we're getting into the really juicy stuff here. So the one of the big overhauls that they've done with the M300 is they've really, they've, they've just, drastically changed the game with um, all of the heads up displays and um, situational awareness tools that a lot of people have been calling out for. So um, you can see in the middle of the screen there, you've got a like a head, you've got a heads up display sort of thing, you've got a virtual horizon. Um, so that's really gonna help you understand the, like you can see all of the information about where your aircraft is in space and really be a lot safer and a lot more effective and, you know, while it was great the way that DJI did used to have a, a vague, uh, they used to have a uh, an artificial horizon of sorts, it's nowhere near as clear, transparent, and anyone who's ever seen any flight simulators or you know flown an aircraft will instantly be able to look at this and say, right, I know exactly what my aircraft is doing, where it is, which I'm facing. Um, one of the big functions there is um, you know the heading. So having your heading to show exactly which way you're facing. Um, is a really handy feature and being able to, uh, I think that you might be able to see there's a yellow, um, so just underneath the, so the circle in the bottom of the screen uh, shows you your distance from, ob like shows you if there are any obstacles um, that are being detected by your, your sensors. Um, the uh, the red arrow in the center of the circle shows you which way you're facing and then you can see at the top of the circle there, it gives you a number which um, shows you the, the heading um, that your aircraft is currently on. So, 
I believe that the yellow dot that's underneath that number rotates around the circle and actually shows you which way your gimbal is facing as well. Um, so that's a really neat function. And I know that there are there are um, a few people who are really calling out for, hey, I, I need to know which way my aircraft is facing in a bearing or heading or whatever. Um, to be able to really reference where things are in relation to the drone. So to contextualize all that is great. Um, so you can see we've got vertical obstacle indicator. Um, that's the, the yellow bar there on the right hand side. We've got an altitude indicator. So having that altitude readout there is just um, awesome. Having a vertical speed and absolute altitude is, is a really nice function as well. You've got your horizon and flight path vector. You've got a horizontal speed indicator. Uh, and then a wind speed and direction. So that's a really nice feature. That wind speed and direction is is a great one for DJI to incorporate. And that's something that you could usually see uh, after the flight. You might be able to go for a bit of a dive and, and find out what the flight, uh, what the wind speeds were, etc. Um, but to have that presented to you in flight in real time is is awesome. So um, yeah, well done to um, to DJI for really improving the situational awareness on on this one. Uh, so now this this one here, this talks about smart. So smart pin and track uh, is a location sharing functionality. So um, this one's kind of geared towards um, the uh, enforcement services, search and rescue. Um, basically, it, it enables collaborative operations. So while you're using either pinpoint or smart track, uh, the subject's location can be shared instantly to a second operator or, if necessary, to ground teams via DJI Flight Hub. So um, I don't want to talk too much about this because it is a little bit um, more, it is a little bit better represented by uh, by showing you guys a video. So it might be that we can send through some um, some files to you guys later, or, or um, have a, a bit of a follow up that kind of uh, looks at these features a little bit more. But essentially, with the new M300 series, it's got a, a lot of really nice AI features that, that allow for much more uh, easy and accurate tracking of vehicles, people. Um, subjects of interest, whatever it is, um, it does seem to do a much nicer job um, over any of the previous systems. So uh, yeah. Um, smart pin and smart track. So again, you can see here, you've got um, some AI functionalities there that are really um, you know, honing in and identifying for you, hey, this is a car, this is a car, this is a car, this is a car. So uh, Obviously, I haven't been able to be hands-on with this new function yet, um, but from what I understand, you, you'll simply have to tap on one of these yellow uh, yellow circles, and then the drone and the camera will automatically track and follow that vehicle. Um, not necessarily um, a, uh, a brand new feature because people have been able to, you know, draw a box around your, you know, person or car that you're tracking. But I believe that, you know. DJI has just really streamlined this, made it um, far more effective. So uh, yeah, I'm really keen to see how uh, emergency services, et cetera, will, uh, will embrace this new technology. Smart pin and track pinpoint. So again, marking objects of interest. So being able to quickly create a pinpoint with a laser rangefinder or on the map, uh, viewing the pinpoint and its distance in real time, and uh, viewing the pinpoint's location and its coordinates on the map. So I know for a fact that um, some of my customers uh, would really, really have loved to have had this functionality uh, during the recent bushfires. Um, I know that there was uh, there were people who were trying to um, uh, operate as a team and, and relay information. And so being able to um, tap on a point on your screen or um, you know select your point of interest etc and then be able to share that information instantly is just mind-boggling to me um, so yeah again well done to DJI the um, some of the other features that I did just want to touch on really quickly on that slide sorry Paris um, there's um, you can see on the left hand side of that DJI interface there you've got um, two buttons which are IR and wide so DJI has made it a lot more simple to just change between the different modes uh, of shooting or between the different camera options that are available to you. So when you're using the H20 or H20T, uh, you know, you, you obviously, if you're using the H20T, you have an infrared option. So being able to just tap that button instantly and switch between the modes, uh, just far more simple. Um, also being able to switch between the wide angle and the zoom lens on, on a single touch is great. Um, and then you can see in the, in the, the top center of the, uh, the screen here, you've got a zoom times five. So that shows you how much zoom you've got at the moment, but 
um, when you're in the when you're using the zoom camera uh, I believe that they've made it a lot more simple to um, to get that zoom functionality um, the Z30 is a phenomenal camera and it, it blew my mind when it first came out and to see DJI improve it further and streamline it and tweak it um, it's just great so um, you can also see here as well you've got that oops sorry Paris I keep jumping the gun or, or backtracking a little bit um, uh, just a little bit excited here uh, so um, on the bottom right hand corner as well there you can see there's an FPV feed so it does look like you can switch between all your different camera feeds uh, very simply and and you know if you get disoriented or say you have a problem with your gimbal or something like that you can just click on that FPV camera feed down the bottom right and just almost instantly you know orient yourself um, the rest of the um, the inf interface there does look quite familiar to a lot of people um, you've also got a beacon there and there's a few other different buttons which I think warrant a little bit more of a deep dive down the line but um, I might ask Paris if he can uh, head to our next slide now um, this one is a really neat function. I was uh, blown away seeing the video of this one online. Um, basically, what this one does is you, so if you head up to your asset that you're inspecting, you can draw a box on your, um, on your screen and it will take uh, an image of uh, the, it'll, it'll basically zoom in and take a bunch of different images which I believe then gets stuck, uh, stitched together. So I think um, in terms of uh, an ease of use of getting a, a much higher quality product, a lot more simply, this is uh, phenomenal. So um, yeah, sorry guys. Also, I just wanted to, to note, we are running, we have run over over time just a touch. So apologies for, for that. And please bear with us if you are able to stick around. We'd love to, to continue to chat with you um, on this system. So uh, if you if you do have to run and, and you do want to shoot us through any questions, by all means do. Um, but yeah, we will continue on for a little bit and we do have some questions that I think we wanted to chat through at the end. So um, this one is potentially one of the, the, the biggest, um, biggest pluses to this. So this is that, um, easily repeatable function that I mentioned at the beginning of the, the presentation. So smart inspection, live mission recording. So basically the, the premise here is that in the use case uh, on your screen for the moment, for example, uh, you could go and take a an image of the, um, the top beam and then the bottom beam and then the middle beam uh, and all of the different components of that. And if you're recording this mission, you can record this mission once and then you can go and repeat this mission every single time and the drone will take care of the framing, everything. It'll take the photo, the exact, it'll essentially take the exact same photo every single time you go out and do this. And so for anyone who's in the inspection space, anyone who's doing anything that needs to be repeated more than once, um, this will just be amazing. So construction teams, anything. So um, I'm really, really keen to get hands on with this one and, and actually put this one into practice and you know be able to communicate with you guys a little bit more effectively on it. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic uh, feature that DJI has um, put together for you guys. Beautiful, so increased flexibility for, for coordinated missions. So this is something that I've touched on before, but uh, it does come back to um, the, uh, the smart controller functionality and, and how it um, can, can be used to hand over control, how it can be used to hand over partial control or, or bunny hop, et cetera. So having that increased flexibility for coordinated missions allows um, you know, multiple, op multiple pilot operations to just be a lot more simple and streamlined. And again, EV loss, BV loss is gonna potentially love this. Um, aircraft control can be locked to enhance flight safety. So for example, if you wanted to make sure that you weren't accidentally able to pass controls around, et cetera, if that's normally part of your operation, that's a really neat safety feature. So again, DJI just thinking outside the box. Um, so typical applications, again, take off and landing from point A to point B. Um, so for example, if you're operating in an environment where maybe uh, you can't quite see the location that you wanted to land in, um, and it's slightly and, and it's a different location to where you took off from. Um, it might be handy for that. Um, if you uh, wanted to be able to hand over controls, you've got that. Um, trainer mode is something that I know a lot of people are screaming out for. Um, you know, I know that uh, our partners over at Avius is to be interested in that one. Um, traditional pilot and co-pilot mode. So again, um, dual pilot operations with this one will be really simple and and easy and, and pleasant. Um, I, uh, yeah, I would be really happy to, to be doing dual pilot ops with this one. Um, 
Uh, beautiful. So SDK, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the SDK options that are already available for some of the other DJI products, um, this will be no surprise to you, but essentially it's, it's a software developer kit. So um, DJI over the last little while have really, really opened up their, um, their doors when it comes to development. Um, and I think that's a really great uh, attitude and, and um, position to take from DJI. Uh, I know that when DJI first started out, they were a little bit more closed and a little bit less open source than they are now. Um, and so to allow people to really tinker and tailor their systems to their own um, their own needs is, um, is great. I guess um, just to touch on the three things that you've got in front of you. So uh, mobile SDK, um, that re relates to uh, the creation of apps, essentially. So being able to uh, utilize a different software to control the drone um, is, is really neat. So that, as well as helping um, the community to have different um, uh, workflows, et cetera, tailored to their own needs, it does also um, contribute to the ability to, to utilize um, payload SDK and onboard SDK, which I'll touch on in just a moment. But essentially that's where you see the likes of, you know, um, Pix4D captured, um, all that kind of stuff. Those third party apps that allow control over the drone. Um, onboard SDK, so uh, onboard SDK is essentially um, the, the AI side of the drone. Um, so that's a, a little bit more of a new addition to the, uh, the M300 uh, lineup. So it's great to see that one there. And then the payload SDK is, um, is what allows for a huge number of payloads to be incorporated to the M300 uh, infrastructure. So um, you may have seen that there's uh, a few really cool payloads like a, um, a spotlight or um, you know a speaker, etc. So um, things like that, the um, payload SDK basically opens that one up. So one of the big ones that I'm a fan of is um, the, the Microsense Altum, for example. So uh, that utilizes a DJI Skyport. And if DJI didn't have the payload SDK there, then um, it wouldn't allow third party um, product manufacturers to integrate their systems with the DJI uh, platform. And I'll talk about it on the next slide, which um, Paris will tick over to for me now. But you can see here, there's a few examples of um, the, the third party payloads that are compatible with the M300. So uh, you've got a spotlight there. So for search and rescue applications or you know inspection work where you might be in a dark environment, that's really handy. Uh, there's a multi-spectral sensor there. So again, the, the on the right-hand side there, you can see the uh, the Microsense Altum. And I, I apologize, I didn't include the, uh, the Skyport in the image, but that system will effectively bolt straight onto the M200 series aircraft. And I'd, um, I'd um, I'm pretty sure that that will just bolt onto the uh, the M300 as well um, and give you that integration that you really want. So from an ease of use point of view, um, it just streamlines the whole process, makes it a lot more reliable and, and user friendly and intuitive. Um, Megaphone again with perfect example with uh, within the um, the recent COVID outbreaks, um, having the ability to put a megaphone onto um, onto a drone and be able to uh, you know, broadcast uh, messages to people uh, is a really handy one. Five lens cameras, you've got laser methane telemeters, uh, spectrum analyzers, gas detectors. Essentially, you're only limited by your imagination and, um, you know, um, given the resources that DJI provides you with, if you, if you are looking to create a payload, um, it's, yeah, they've made it really user-friendly uh, within reason. Obviously, there's a lot of skill involved uh, in, into developing those sorts of payloads, but um, that's the kind of thing that we here at Sphere are, are pretty well-versed in is creating a, a system that can, um, sorry, creating a, a payload um, or integration and custom solutions that uh, can utilize those sorts of things. So if you guys do have any custom solutions that you want us to, to give you a hand with, please feel free to reach out and um, we'll see, uh, see how we can help. So I believe we've got another poll here now. So I'll hand, hand over to Paris for a moment. Yeah, thanks, Owen. We're getting through to the back end um, of the presentation and we've just got another poll here. Um, what is the most appealing new feature of the DJI Matrice 300 series? Now, there were a couple of people that um, did say they were unable to submit um, poll questions, but pretty much if you minimise your screen of the poll questions, you should be able to submit those, um, those questions themselves. So um, that was a quick tip from one of our um, fellow colleagues on the 
on the uh, the webinar. Again, there's the questions tab there on the right hand side. I know Alex has been rigorously uh, pumping away at his keypad, answering a lot of questions there, and we will answer them to the wider audience. But we do encourage these questions to come through. Um, it's it's fantastic um, to see all those questions come through. Great. Thank you, everyone, um, for submitting those polls. Now, um, pricing has been a, a structure of a structure, and a number of questions have come through. But this is a pricing structure to what they see the DJI Matrice 300 series sit at. So, as you can see there, um, for just about um, eleven thousand dollars, the 300 RTK, um, the TB60 flight battery at twelve hundred dollars, the BS60 flight battery at eighteen hundred dollars, um, the H20 at just under six thousand. Um, the um, the Zenmuse H20T at fifteen thousand seven hundred and nineteen, and then if you have a look at our availabilities, we're expecting to receive a, a rental and demonstration unit um, within the next two weeks, um, middle of May. And then if you have a look at sales and deliveries, so we're taking purchase orders at this stage um, for our enterprise and exclusive customers only, um, and we're looking at delivery end of May. I guess the biggest challenge that we're faced with at the moment is the sea freight of batteries. So. Those batteries are on their way over from um, the manufacturer, and we're approaching them. Um, we're approaching it as on a um, first first in um, best dress basis. We do have a, another poll question. This is specifically around: um, Would you be interested in a face-to-face -face demonstration? Um, part of our operational certificate, we are REOC certified, and we do have the capability of um, delivering um, demonstrations to our clients. So. If you guys can just get to the back end of that poll, that would be fantastic. Um, if you are interested in a in a face to face demonstration, we're more than likely to facilitate them um, for you all. Um, there, and we've just got one more poll um, before we get on um, to the next um, before we get on to question and answers. Um, give me a sec. Wait for a couple more people to answer that poll question. Thank you. Um, and please do submit um, those questions there on the right hand side. Um, we will be offering online demonstrations plus face to face and we will be in touch if you did um, answer yes. And then the last one is, would you like um, a Sphere Drone team to get in touch with you? Obviously, we're understanding that this is supposed to be an educational piece and there is interest here um, with regards to the solution. So um, we will only be reaching out to the people that do say yes. So um, if, you, if you'd like to submit that question there, that'd be fantastic. Wait for a couple more people to submit um, their poll question and then um, we'll get on to question and answers. And I'll probably um, get Alex to give us his hottest question that has come through for the day and then we'll, we'll roll from there. So, um, Alex, I'll hand over to you, mate. Yeah, thanks for that one, Paris. Um, and thanks for all the questions, everyone. Apologies, I haven't been able to get to all of them. There have been um, quite a few coming through, but. Um, now some great questions. Yes, so a few of them that have come through. There's one: What's the max takeoff weight of the system? Um, that's nine kilograms. Um, so we see that does mean that you need that um, seven to twenty-five kilogram endorsement to operate. Um, there's been a number of questions coming through on the survey functionality of the system. Um, now on the DJ website, it does say that PPK support is coming for the system. However, that's not currently um, available. Um, when it's equipped with third-party payloads, it is designed to be able to give survey grade results. Um, however, there are some more developments coming here. So um, at this stage, no, but you know the technology is there to be able to deliver those results. Um, Few questions coming in about the batteries. Um, I believe that was a typo on the last slide. The BS60 is the TB60. Um, they're $1,200 per battery. Um, given the the watt hours, they aren't available. They aren't able to be travelled with on aircraft. Um, so we will be having an announcement soon about um, a, a solution to that, um, where you will be able to access batteries. Um, in various locations, but unfortunately, no, you cannot fly with those batteries. Just to chime in um, a little bit here, Alex, as well, the, the BS60 actually refers to the, the flight battery station. So that's the intelligent battery station um, is the uh, BS60. Um, just also uh, wanted to, to 
chip in a little bit as well on that survey functionality front as well. So from what I understand, um, DJI are working on a um, on a, a an alternative for the uh, the RGB camera that we don't have at the moment. So obviously with the 210 RTK V2, you do have that X7 compatibility and you do have that standalone RGB imager in the X4S, 5S or X7. Um, from what I understand, they are looking at that and there is something in the works, um, but we don't have any information about it at the moment. Um, and just as a little bit of a bonus uh, question, a little bonus bit of trivia there for you guys as well. Um, I have heard rumors of a, uh, a, a LiDAR um, as well. So uh, potentially we'll see a, a LiDAR coming and I don't think that that's the, um, the, the LiveOx system either. I think that there might be a, a slightly higher grade um, LiDAR unit. Um, but anyway, sorry, back over to you, Alex, and um, I can always chip in some well, extra. That's all right, Al. we'll, we'll have to get you in for a few of these other ones because I can't necessarily get the answer myself. Um, there's a, a, another one here uh, that's come through a few times. Actually, does it support the X5S, X4S or X7? Um, at this stage, it does not. Um, I'm not sure whether or not we're expecting there to be any firmware upgrades in the future that will um, allow that functionality. But at this point in time, um, there is no support for those particular cameras. Um, and Elliot, was there anything you wanted to add there? Uh, I guess just on the the rationale for that, I believe that um, the reason they haven't been able to uh, make the X4S, 5S and X7 compatible with the uh, M300 is because of a hardware uh, consideration. I believe that if you look at the X-T2, Z20, Z20T and Z30, they're all cameras that have those uh, memory cards uh, built into the, the camera gimbal assembly. So... Um, yeah, I, I would be um, keeping an eye out. It, I'd, I'd hope that DJI would potentially al um, allow uh, for some degree of um, forward compatibility between the X4S, 5S and X7 with the um, M300 series, maybe through an adapter or something like that. But um, it, it might be that because of the uh, the improvements to the, uh, the M300 and the technology that's been incorporated into it, it might be that DJI has something else up their sleeve that we uh, might be pleasantly surprised with. So fingers crossed. Yeah, thanks for that one, um, Al. Um, a few more questions that have come through here and apologies, we, we don't have all the answers right now. We will be hands on with the system um, next week. And as Elliot said, we we will be posting some videos um, and a bit more information of that at that stage. Um, some great questions coming through about cross compatibility um, of payloads and drones. Um, at this stage, the H20 is only supported by the M300. So um, unfortunately for all those M200 or M600 owners that were looking to be able to upgrade just to the camera only, that support is not there at this point in time. Yeah, just on that as well, Alex. The um, the the reason that that is is that the um, the the cameras do have a lot of um, hardware in them that I do believe takes a little bit of processing power, and so there's a lot of smart features um, and functionalities that really do require the brains and and um, brawn, I suppose, of the uh, the M300. So, um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, just going through a few more of these questions now. Yeah, so there, there's a few more ones here um, just regarding a, a number of questions coming through on the, on the mapping capabilities. Again, um, not complete solid answers to those ones right now, but as we learn more and are able to run our own sort of demonstrations and product testings, we'll be able to, to get to those. But um, yeah, there's some of the main ones. There are a few other more specific ones coming through here, but we'll follow up with those ones offline and, and get out to those people um, specifically. So, um, yeah. Thank uh, you very much, Julian and Alex, um, both done an amazing job today. Um, and the last thing there is as part of an exclusive webinar, and this relates to those that have attended today's webinar, um, we are offering, with any purchase or purchase orders, place for end of financial year, free manufacturer training and handovers. So that's one day full face-to-face -face manufacturer type training. At this stage, it's going to be done online, face-to-face um, -face with video. Um, so when you do see um, 
your unit. Um, we will deliver that with Elliot, um, the Chief Bank Pilot, the, the, the lovely gentleman that presented all the um, valuable information to you today. And alongside with that um, purchase, not only will we offer that free training, but we'll also offer 50% off um, Sphere Drones' maintenance program, which is which includes two maintenance services over the 12 months. So pretty much um, buy, get one free. So um, that's valued at $2,000. So um, again, just one last thing for us today is there is an upcoming webinar next Thursday, the 15th of May on water sampling at depth with drones and custom solutions. Um, so feel free to submit, um, feel free to join us on that on that webinar. And again, I'd like to thank um, my fantastic team at Sphere Drones for really putting together a, a webinar today. And we really hope um, that you found that valuable, enjoyable. Um, and for those that do want to reach out, um, yeah, feel free to reach out, Elliot, myself, Alex, um, the entire team at Sphere Drones, we're here to answer any of your questions or queries. And again, thank you for joining us today and spending the afternoon um, with us. Um, have a fantastic weekend. Um, stay safe. And um, thank you. Is there any last comments from Elliot and Alex, sir? No, not really, guys. I mean, I, I was just saying to my colleagues that I think what we'll probably be looking to do over the next little while is go into a bit more of a deep dive. So I know that we, we kind of got halfway there this um, this afternoon, but I think that there's just so much to this system that you know we will probably end up putting out some new content or potentially organising another webinar that's a little bit more um, specific. Uh, so uh, yeah, keep keep your eyes peeled, and um, if there's any questions you have, just get in touch. Alex, anything on your end? Yeah, no, all good. Thanks to the, everyone for attending and um, for all the questions. We've learned a bit ourselves in here with some of those as well. So appreciate the engagement. And, Look forward to hopefully chatting with uh, a few of you over the next few weeks and um, yeah, getting some people hands on. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, um, Elliot. And thanks to everyone that attended today. It's fantastic to see everyone engaged um, as much as they have. Have a great weekend and um, please join us on the next Sphere Drones webinar. And one last thing, this webinar will be, um, is obviously being recorded and we will share it um, after um today and online so you'll receive a, a an email with um the link to that so thank you again um and have a great weekend cheers